is an intro to the next video you're about ready to watch. And this is my, uh, so I have twin sisters. One is um, retiring from the Air Force while the other one just got promoted in the Air Force. So the one who's retiring just retired as an E-8, so a senior master sergeant. Uh, and then my other sister who's still in um, decided, well not decided, but um, is promoted, was just promoted to an E-8 as well. So it's great news for the family. Um, everybody is happy. It's, it was a joyous night. Um, a lot of friends and family folks traveled from as far as Maryland, I think it was, to Arizona. We had some folks from the different branches um, in different areas come out and, and travel from Southern California and other places to Arizona. So it was a very, um, it was a very great night. Um, the first time my brothers and sisters and my daughter and, and now the new grandbaby uh, were all in the same place um, for a while, uh, since a while. So my, last time my sister and my brothers were all in the same place, 2011. So um, being in the Air Force, travel, uh, and then work and life and all that other stuff. So we were able to all finally um, get back together and have a great night celebrating my two twin sisters. So here they are. Uh, so here is their uh, first picture in uniform after they enlisted. And here is the last picture. Um, I think this is when my sister uh, was promoted. Uh, to EA, so three and a half, 2014, so three and a half years ago, uh, my sister just retired, uh, was promoted to um, senior master sergeant. So, um, we are, so yeah, I'll stop talking, I'll let the video play, um, it's fairly long, it's about an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes or so, but it covers everything throughout the night, um, the people arriving, um, us getting ready for dinner, and then the actual, um, um, reading of the awards and, and certificates and then on into the appreciation gifts and uh, a few folks got up and shared some um, some thoughts and some comments and some emotions came out so uh, a few tears um, and uh, my sister so if you watch the other video that showed you the license plates that I um, gave to them Inside the video, you will see the um, their reaction to those. So I'm quite impressed and happy with that. Uh, but they loved them, and uh, I'll put uh, I you know things in the description to call out when certain things are happening throughout the video. Uh, so if you wanted to go to that piece and see the reaction and and um, see the presentation of those uh, license plates, you could do that. Uh, but again, it's it's a whole whole evening of recording and again so I was recording from my GoPro uh, so easy to hold obviously uh, but also easy to go like this and, and move around um, so there are some shaky points in the video of just um, the um, me moving around me not being stable me changing it from hand to hand or you know those kind of things so uh, it is it is a rookie move, I don't care, uh, but the video is captured, it's here, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you very much for my sisters and their service. Um, love you guys. Take two. <laughs> All right. Wait, wait, wait. Come on, people, move. People got to get out the way. Got to practice the entrance. Oh, I think we're all right. All right, all right, here we go. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Right down the hallway, second door on the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was classic. All right. I'm here to 
party can begin. Baked chicken. Oh, so do you gotta sit where your place market? Oh, they're all the same. Oh, they all the same? Water's okay right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's up, buddy? Ready to party? Ready to party? All right. You got your suspenders on in case you eat a lot? Yeah. In case they grow a little. Your stuff can expand a little bit? Yeah. All right. It's one, right? So. Carrie's the overall on this whole thing now, but she's okay. everybody. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, perfect. Carrie, it's Carrie. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's our perfect. Yep, yep. Carrie, Good. Can I get you something to drink? Yeah. Uh, oh, they have water? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, of course. All right, buddy, we're going for a ride. We're going to have to go parkwise that way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you, you need. Yeah, there's nothing over there. You need a second breather? I do. All right. Hello, little man. What's up, buddy? It's <laughs> <laughs> a little one. Yeah, this is my great nephew. So far, okay, you can you? All right, right this way. You like <laughs> What's up, buddy? What are you doing? You gonna give people high fives when they come in? Oh, there's Mr. Rayhorn. Mr. Who? Rayhorn. He was my department head and last supervisor at Dinfos. Okay. Him so, and his wife came so, all the way so, out the So we're opening the door for everybody, right? Yep. All right, sounds good. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. No matter who they are, we just open the door for them. Yep. What's up, buddy? And I usually just let them know that this is not my guest. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Take the hallway all the way back, second door on the right. Okay. How's the dog? Oh, uh, he's good. A little stoned, but he's good. Okay. <laughs> A little stoned. Hello. Tell us. <laughs> this is my great nephew. So you're going to want to sit next to him. He's my stepdad. He's a Green Bay fan. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Um, just Matter of fact, it's on Lombardi time. Yeah. Yeah. 15 yeah. minutes early. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I gave them a head count of like as far as what we were eating, but you'll still have to place your order. Like you'll work with my friend Chrissy has a list. Okay. <laughs> right. How many more people we expect? Well, there's How many? Almost 40. Okay. Uh, okay, here's the deal. Every time you take a picture with you, hold the baby and me stand next to you. Because this is too funny. Oh, yeah. 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 You are you are presenting it like it's like he's your own. Then you can say, look how busy she's been. I look like a She looks fine. Okay, we're good. Hi there, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. All right. Exciting curling on TV. All her medals. Yep. Yeah. Pull it up so you don't have to look at it. So there's no glare on it on the TV. How you doing, man? Oh. Fort Meade. <laughs> Been there a few times. Yeah.
just go to Hawaii and just spend three years. Yeah, right. Just hang out. Yeah. Hmm. What is this one? What does that mean? What? AFI? Per AFI. So mm-hmm. AFI is Air Force Instruction. Oh, okay. So Teacher. Basically, I'm sure that's something she said a lot. It's like, uh, per AFI, whatever, whatever, you oh, have to do this. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that was her. It's, yeah, it's sure. the book? It's the reg? Yeah, it's the reg? It's the reg? It's the reg? Got it, got it, got it. We don't call them regulations, we call them AFIs, yeah. Got it, okay. Right. Quoting AFIs, that's my sister, I guess. 20 years, 21 years. And all the people, all the people, all the people. And the baby. of retirement ceremonies and I kind of just want to do something where nobody had to work. Where everybody just got to enjoy it. Especially my fellow PA. So um, we are going to do some certificate reading, although we don't have the official certificates. They'll be read so everybody can, you know, hear them for the umpteenth million time if you've been in the Air Force for a while. Um, we're going to do some gifts. If at any point you guys want to get up, know me a while, you got a story you want to share, uh, feel free to do that. Go, feel free to do that. If I've corrected you on your dressing fear, so you're always waiting for me. <laughs> so just um, relax, enjoy, and uh, thank you for coming. Sorry, on the second. Yeah. All right, so I was waiting for the ice cream to get passed out. So, uh, first of all, Carrie, thank you for inviting me. Let me be here. I know uh, we only know each other. That's my replacement. Hang a little bit. So, I'm, uh, I'm Chuck Marsh. I'm Carrie's replacement. Uh, so, I'm the one who got to, to be lucky enough to come in and hear all the wonderful things that she did and set the bar way too high for me. So, thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, I strive to achieve. Yeah, okay. And, and um, she, she did correct me on that. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody's got to so, do it. So anyway, so um, you know, everybody knows here that we, we had a kind of a short timeline to work with to get our all our certificates set. And unfortunately, we don't have all the certificates back yet, but I have the verbiage that's going to go along with it. Uh, before I get to that, though, uh, there's something that we as uh, at senior NCOs, we, we have a senior NCO free. And you actually, once you make E7 is what they, what they tell it to you, but I, I really wanted to say it again real quick, just so everybody can kind of see what we're held to and what she's kind of uh, lived with and embraced and kind of uh, in the uh, So uh, if you would, uh, embellish me real quick. So uh, like I said, in the, in the United States Air Force, a senior master sergeant joins an elite group. It's the top 2% of the United States military. The term sergeant is an ancient honorable one that denotes a person possessing special skills, trust, and integrity. Senior master sergeants have mastered the techniques and abilities required of non-commissioned officers. You, Carrie, have freely accepted responsibility beyond the call of normal duty. You have, by your actions and performance, earned the respect of your seniors and juniors. More was expected of you, and you delivered. You were in an exclusive group, a group dedicated to taking care of those who follow in your footsteps. So thank you. So you swore and you lived by the creed of the senior non-commissioned officer. And here's, here's the uh, the tenets that we go by. I am a senior non-commissioned officer in the United States Air Force. I hold allegiance to my country, devotion to duty, and personal integrity above all. I wear my rank of authority with dignity. I promote the highest standards of conduct, appearance, and performance by setting the example. I seek no favors because of my rank. I am devoted to the concept of service rather than personal gain. I uphold the traditions of senior non-commissioned officers who have preceded me. I manage resources under my control with astute efficiency and lead the way with the highest levels of competence. I always strive to merit the respect of my fellow senior non-commissioned officers and all of whom I come in contact with. And so that's what we try to live, try to live by, and that's what Carrie has done. So thank you. I'd like to jump in here for a second. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't have to jump. Okay. Yeah, please don't jump. Don't jump. Yeah, don't jump. So, don't jump. I think this is a great opportunity because um, my family received really good news yesterday. 
and it looks like as I take my senior monster stars and stripes off, my sister will be putting hers on. Wow. Yay! But don't tell anyone because it's not official until next Thursday. <laughs> so here. I would like to think I wore them well. <laughs> But if you look, this is our very first photo in uniform from basic training. And this was our last photo in uniform right before my senior master sergeant promotion in 2014. And it only took me four years to catch up in case y'all didn't track on that. <laughs>
by order of the Secretary of the Air Force and the Department of the Air Force, Terry S. Whitehead is relieved from active duty 56 Fighter Wing, Luke Air Force Base, Arizona, and is retired from active duty within the United States Air Force, effective 25 February 2018, in the grade of Senior Master Sergeant. After 21 years, 6 months, and 12 days of faithful and honorable duty. Alright, so now you are officially retired. And you are this is this is way better than the way it really works because we're doing the abridged version. Um, normally by now we would all be mad at her for the amount of time we've had to stand up and get attention, especially if it's in the heat and our feet are burning. Yeah. So thank you, Mrs. Really cool. You're welcome. Don't forget <laughs> okay. 3 o'clock on Friday because that's when they always go down. Uh, <laughs> and they always start talking about the APR. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't look into that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Chief? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, next we're going to go on to the uh, certificate of appreciation from the President. Certificate of appreciation for service in the armed forces of the United States. Senior Master Sergeant Kerry S. Whitehead, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation for your contribution and honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in your keeping with the proud traditions of military service. Your commitment and dedication have been an inspiration for those who will follow those who will follow in your footsteps and for all Americans who join me today in saluting you for a job extremely well done. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, George W. Bush, Commander Commander Chief. Right. Right. At this point, we would tell Carrie to go ahead and step to the side. It's Cassidy. So, so this is where we'll pull Cassidy up, make her feel all special. Come on, Cass. Come on. Go ahead, go ahead. Woohoo! <laughs> she's 11, so she's already almost taller than people. Alright, here we go. Alright. So we have a certificate that would come to Cassidy. So, uh, once again, we would now like to present Cassidy J. Whitehead with a certificate of appreciation for steadfast support of her mother, Senior Master Sergeant Carrie Whitehead, throughout her career, or at least as long as she was <laughs> Okay, so, certificate of appreciation from the United States Air Force. In grateful appreciation, the United States Air Force presents Cassidy J. Whitehead this certificate of recognition, commitment, and numerous contributions that made positive impacts to the nation defense. Thank you for the support which gave strength and purpose to your service. service. Signed, General David L. Goldby, Chief of Staff. So, uh, yeah, basically, that's pretty much what we have right now. So, All right, uh, we got one more thing. Uh, well, more stuff back there, but... Yeah, we've got plenty of stuff back there. Where is it? Alright, Cass. We gotta make this official. Uh oh, you get a pin. <laughs> Got it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
<laughs> so, uh-huh. That's you call it. All right, we got Miss Debbie's gonna go first. Oh, Miss Debbie's gonna go first? Okay. Right. So it's a, it's a tradition in public affairs offices when you when you have a base newspaper or a magazine that um, you try really hard to embarrass the person leaving with a uh, an interesting cover. Uh, so uh, Miss Deb is, is our thunderbolt master. So she's got this for. Is it last <laughs> Okay, we want you to open that. Okay. Um, she made sure she was going to get one of these because she asked me last week and I looked at her like, of course, we would not let her out of the Air Force without getting her own Thunderbolt front page. <laughs> it's a little story, it's all true, although she may deny certain facts or certain statements, I should say. Um, one thing I want to say is that I've been at Luke Air Force Base for 15 years. I've never been in the military, but I have, I, I truly feel like I am in the military having uh, been with y'all. People will say, well, why are you uh, there? And I said, because I love those people. I love those military people. Anybody who's involved with the military, they are great people. Now, there, there are a few crazies, I have to admit. <laughs> You're not listening. My bad. <laughs> and one of the best people I have ever met in my 15 years at Luke is this young woman standing right here. Um, I had no idea when she came that we would become such good friends. And uh, she has been a joy to me. One thing I have loved watching her do is just take care of her airmen. I mean, she that was her whole heart, her whole goal. And she is truly... The Air Force is, is losing a great one tomorrow, but the world is gaining a great one. So, we're going to miss you. That was written with real heart and truth. Uh -huh. <sighs> anyway, I love you. Inside, stories. Tough but girly warrior, page two. Man of Dream Shows, three. Senior NCO, firm believer, page five. Men afraid to love, 15. And then we got Senior NCO plays sexy party girl when asked to star in Law and Order SVU. I totally be down for that. <laughs> um, let's see, index. It carries AFI tips, dog stories, spotlight on Carrie's pet rugs, someone's out of regs. Senior Master Sergeant Bleeds Air Force Blue and Joy of Kitchen Island. Yes! Why can't they give me the island I want? <laughs> Quote of the week. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Winston Churchill. Alright. Senior Master Sergeant Karen Whitehead has her hair cut under the guise of avoiding a cancer treatment side effect. It was later discovered she was collecting her hair for a new business she planned, which would keep her and Cassidy, her daughter, rolling in dough after retirement. <laughs> and then Cassidy, you made the thunderbolt. <laughs> Cat-like girl seen fleeing Arizona in vehicle with senior reported to have an eerie resemblance to Cassidy Whitehead, the senior's 11-year-old daughter. So, new career for retirees strolling into South Carolina's sunset. Senior Master Sergeant Carrie Whitehead has left the building. It has been reported she was seen fleeing Arizona in a mid-sized white SUV or crossover type vehicle. It was also reported but has yet to be confirmed that she had one person cat-like <laughs> being in the vehicle with her and some other various dog-like creatures. It was just by sheer good fortune that a photographer was there to snap and snap the photo while the cat-like being was out of the vehicle and then, like magic, it appeared. It had leapt through the passenger side window into the vehicle, or maybe not. It was awfully sleek and fast. And I revealed the creature was cute, stylish, and appeared to be very similar to Cassidy Whitehead the senior's 11-year-old daughter. Senior Whitehead was not available for comment to confirm or deny the story. Her years 
in public affairs had equipped her to dodge reporters, spin, 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 avoid direct responses, skirt the facts, cloud the issues. It may be years before the real story is known. Senior is said to be heading to, for South Carolina, where she has already set up a fully loaded, state-of-the-art, totally tricked-out crib. <laughs> On a retirement income, you may say, everything she does is full of mystery, you say. Well, after weeks of investigation, her plot to have more to spend more has been exposed. According to an anonymous source, Senior Whitehead has been sh shaving your head for years <laughs> under the guise of avoiding cancer treatment side effects. She shaves her head and has created a new product that no one knew they needed until now, pet rugs. <laughs> and I don't mean a rug they lay on. I mean a rug that lays on them. <laughs> you know, a hair hat. Lug food. Or Hannah Montana. Justin Bieber in a blonde wig. Yes, if you look closely at your pet, you're going to see a spot of missing or thinning fur. Or maybe your pet just wants to up his fashion game. You need to take care of that. You need a pet rug. Also available are pillows stuffed with his ears. <laughs> <laughs> she will be she will be the next successful business owner in the land of Forbes list of billionaires. It has also been confirmed that prior to her Arizona exit, she took Cassidy and escaped to the Great Wolf Lodge. Great Wolf Lodge, you say? What be that, you say? That's 84 degrees of fabulous senior say. It's a giant indoor water park. Cass and I play all day and have a blast. Cass just loves it, and I just love seeing her so happy. Hmm, really? Is it just, is it really just an indoor water park? Or is it family friendly atmosphere, dis uh, a disguise for what's really going on there? Long after the kiddos have been tucked in for the night, the parents leave their rooms closed on of one of 10. I've waited a long time for this. Senior says, I've got to put some boogie in my woogie. <laughs> Some might mistakenly call it just another dance hall that plays country music and teaches line dancing, but they would be wrong. The proprietor of the venue is not just a lover of indoor water, parks and country, uh, parks and country and western music. He is an international phenomenon who performs and teaches cloggy nightly, clogging nightly except Mondays. Her love for country dance drove her to Great Wolf Lodge, but it's the clogging that captured her feet. The search for a clogging club has been far and wide. No luck so far, but she's not giving up. She's moving to South Carolina, where there is an American Legion Lodge just across the border in Georgia that clogs on Saturday nights. She also heard the climate promotes hair growth. Win-win. <laughs> Senior goes by book nails. Airman with a box. <laughs> Hold on. For us losers. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure they weren't giving you guys nope. Nope. bills. <laughs> nope. All for, the, right. for the drinkers. All right. What's next? So these guys are going to come on down and uh, continue with the next. All right. Oh. You got to love their call. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't care about it. What the? Oh. So, we're going to go after uh, Miss Deb and the Thunderbolt. So, um, please don't judge me. Uh, really quick, though, this wonderful woman here, Sergeant Rowe, actually put this whole thing together put so much time and effort into it, I think it looks amazing, so. She just put it together, she actually built the box. Wow. Everything. She did everything from scratch. Um. <laughs> she made the wood and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just really quick, uh, so when I first met uh, Sarah Whitehead, I was really nervous. Um, because I met her just for like a second and then I went out on maternity leave. And so I, was like, I heard that she was really good with her AFIs and uniform standards and everything um, from somebody that was at Dimplos with her and I was really scared because I'm like, everybody's had a chance to get to know her and here I'm gonna come in here and uh, she's not gonna like me or whatever, I don't know, I was just so nervous. But I got to know you over the last couple years and um, 
fear just went away. It's just all of those corrections or whatever it is, it's just your vast knowledge of everything. I could go to you with any question and you were there to help guide me along or you found a way to find the right response and put me in the right direction and I think that you've done that for everybody. So the plaque says, um, Senior Master Sergeant Carey for AFI Whitehead, uh, United States Air Force, 14 August 1996, 25 Feb 2018. And then we always put another quote under there, which is, I'm a firm believer because uh, every time she had something to tell us that maybe we weren't quite gonna, you know, might not be what you wanted to hear, but she always knew how to start it out <laughs> inspiring. You know, like, I'm a firm believer. And then she dropped the news on you. And, and it just didn't seem quite as bad, you know? So, um, but seriously, you've done so much for our whole entire office, every airman in the office. Me personally, um, I've come really close to you in the last uh, year or so, definitely, and you've just been such an inspiration with, um, not just as a senior NCO, but everything that you have gone through. Uh, to see you still not abandon your airmen, you were, you know, in this, insane fight for your life and uh, you never let us down once. You persevered, you still came to work and you worked from home, did whatever it took to continue looking out for us. So I appreciate it and I know the whole office does. Um, uh, so just to caveat with Jenna, um, I heard that you were coming in and I was actually previously assigned to my Air Force Base with Sergeant Spade, so she sent me a message. Cast, close your ears. You scared the shit out of me before you came in. Um, but truly, the moment that we all got comfortable with each other and learned our roles and places and learned more about each other, you definitely stepped up and are definitely one of the best senior NCOs that I've met in the Air Force. I'm actually a civilian, um, but I chose to deploy last year. It was a hot mess for a civilian deploy, um, but Senior Whitehead stepped up and did everything in her power to make sure I was out the door on time, even though it was a week's notice, but we did it. And then I just definitely appreciate all of your follow-ups the whole time I was deployed to ensure that I was okay. And then on top of that, coming back and us readjusting to a change in the office, it was definitely a eye-awakening moment when you decided to leave the office. Um, but it's always been a blessing and it's very exciting for me when you walk in surprisingly. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying. You're Sorry. So I'm terrible at this. They do not pay me for this. That's good. That was good. Okay. Sierra's like, I'm going to make a break for it. <laughs> so I am, uh, my name is Charlene Spade. I've known Carrie since 9899. So 20 years. It's been a long time. Um, I can't tell many sources of crying because here goes. Oh. Shoot, I'm so bad at this. Um, <laughs> Those were number two, Spader, number two. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, all of you guys uh, hit the nail on the head with Carrie. I think it's funny because um, I never thought we'd be friends either when I met her. Because much like she is now, as a senior airman, is much like she is now. So she was, uh, I was, my leadership style was kind of like, oh, good, good. you know? Hers was like, and you all know this, but she is like the most loyal friend anyone could ever have. And I tell it off about how strong she is and how she never falters and wavers. And, Every hurdle that she's ever gone through, like she'll be in the middle of a hurdle, look at you, and go, you good? 
Yeah, and then she'll continue doing what she's got to do. So with every medical issue she's got, and then raising Cassidy, she never did falter as far as being your friend, taking care of her airmen, and it's one of the things that I would tell my airmen, like, girl, let me tell you about this girl I know. Um, Carrie Whitehead is one of the best people you will ever, ever know in your whole life. And I, for one, I'm very honored to know her. So once upon a time, long time ago, <laughs> Girl. We made staff at the same time. She made it first time, I made it the fourth time. So, um, <laughs> but she's, she's sharp as a tack. And uh, she, <laughs> so this is when I realized that I need to be this woman's friend. She, you guys know the 35, uh, 2903, 2903. She used to wear a black t shirt under her BDU. She rolled up her sleeves, right? There's nothing in the AFI saying you cannot roll up your sleeves, but a master sergeant sure did step up to her and say, you need to roll those sleeves down. And Erin <laughs> Lindsay at the time says, there is nothing in 3510 that states that I need to put my sleeves down. And the mass artist said, I told you to. She's like, and you can show me something in 3510 that says I need to put my sleeves down. I was like, okay, I'm going to be her friend because she knows her shit. <laughs> but it has always been my pleasure and my honor. Still not in there, by the way. Not in there. <laughs> To be it wasn't friend. 3510 back then either, but <laughs> it wasn't 29 nothing. Anyway, <laughs> here's your gift. There's stuff in there for you. Alrighty. Um, but I am honored to be here with her today. She, <laughs> I'm, I'm so awkward, and I, um, I don't like to hold a wet soda can or a wet glass. I used to wrap a napkin around them all the time. <laughs> this is 13 the stitches in a minor artery. <laughs> This is how good a friend she is to me. So she had bought me a koozie for my cans and stuff, but I used to love to carry this big iced tea jug around. And she was trying to find me something to wear to put around it. So she found a rubber hose. She went into maintenance, right? No, I just had a leatherman. So and she went, she had a rubber, but you wanted a maintenance to get the rubber hose or something. No, I had that. I had a rubber hose. Randomly, she had a rubber hose. Anyway, so she cuts it and she goes to cut it and she cuts her wrist from here to here. There's blood everywhere. She's going and rinsing it out in the maintenance thing. Anyway, that's a good friend right there. I never did get my little piece, but that's okay. No. <laughs> but I got 13 stitches. 13. Yes, high five, sister. Yeah. And I didn't claim that one to the end. I didn't think it was right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Would you know one of these? For Cassidy. Oh, yeah. Hey, come, sister girl. Okay, this is for you. And there is a poem. It's called the Dandelion Poem, and it's a military child thing. So it says that the dandelion uh, plants itself no matter, it plants itself anywhere, and it is unbreakable. Um, it's one. So this is for you. Oh my god, that is not what I think it is, is it? <laughs> What do you think it is? It is. It's like some sort of order form, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a 214 blanket. Oh, it's a 214 blanket. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Um, when we heard we were getting a new superintendent, uh, we in the other office uh, Facebook stalked you. Um, uh, just to find out what we were getting, what to expect, and um, a few people said, oh yeah, she's awesome, she's cool, she's nice, alright, cool, we'll kind of wait to, and, and see when she gets here. And then, uh, I want to say maybe it was a week or two after you got here, the first real conversation you got on me because the hair bands in my hair were not the same color as brown. One was light, one was dark, and that was unacceptable. So she actually called me and said, she's like, 
you know, your hair bands don't match. And it's like, but they're all brown. No, they're different shades. <laughs> so, um, yeah. she did. Uh, but um, I've heard a lot of people up here talking about, you know, the, the qualities of of you, and uh, I know we talked about the gifts. We're, we're going to exchange later once we've moved. <laughs> um, something very uh, personal that you said to me one day. You, need to have you told me that I remind you of yourself as a young staff. <laughs> yep. And that was very <laughs> very amazing to hear from you. And uh, from this moment, uh, that, that she said that I knew she was very different than any, any other NCO I'd ever come across. And um, it's amazing to be able to have somebody guide you and mentor you, but allow you to be yourself as an airman and to encourage you to be yourself rather than be something that the Air Force wants you to be. She found my strength and brought it out. And that I wanted to share with everybody because that's an amazing gift. To have. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Here. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, I recently got out of the Air Force a few months ago, but I've never ever been close to anything here or anyone who is to that rank and she yeah. Yeah. long story short I almost died went to the hospital got a parasite got my color removed and um, <laughs> she was going through <laughs> and I'm complicated <laughs> she was going through her own chemo stuff and she didn't have any hair but she still came to the hospital to visit me it really meant a lot and then she kept in touch, you know, yeah, after I got out. So, I'm crying. Okay. So, I have a Grace of Spells. I'm crying too because um, that was a really hard time for both of us. Um, you know, for, for you to come in, obviously, recovering from cancer. And I showed, you know, what everyone said is that you're a person of great integrity and you care about your people. Um, and to see her through that recovery and to not only get her out of the military um, the way that she did and for us to finally be together after three and a half years of long distance relationship meant a lot. And, and the fact that you mentored her about that, um, your strength obviously allowed her to enable that strength from, from her recovery. And, I think it's because of that mentorship that she's been able to live so happily, which makes our relationship a lot stronger. So I, this is the second time that I've ever met you, or you know, but I can already tell that how, how much you've impacted her throughout her life, and I appreciate everything that you've done for her. So good luck in your retirement. And obviously, you've done so much in your career. And I'm proud to say that you've joined the military and served our country. Well, obviously, all these people love you. Um, so, appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're crying, though. I'm out. <laughs> you, you and me, we're out, man. <laughs> no, sorry, I gotta get up there. I got... Yeah. I'm gonna be real short. Um, Carrie's BFF. Uh, there's really no word for me to describe her other than my BFF. She's an amazing person, the strongest person, the sweetest person, the strictest person. Um, she has no problem correcting me as well. So please don't take it personally if you're a troop of hers. I was actually a troop of hers at one point, very short point. I think we figured out like 31 days, I think she figured it out. Yeah, kind of complication while we were deployed together, um, but she came in in a very compli complicated time in my life, and she looked at me as a person. She didn't judge me of what was the situation. I didn't judge her on what I was being told about her either. All I knew was like, oh my goodness, a, a master sergeant's coming in and she's going to hate me. Uh, she <laughs> and literally within days, she said, we need to talk. 
Okay. And it was amazing. Soon after we got home, we went home to completely different circumstances. But we kept in contact. And just a little bit of contact that we had. I was in Okinawa. She was in Charleston. And for some miracle in the world, I was told my next assignment was going to be Minot, or I think Whiteman. And my word just came clear that I was going to Charleston. That's where she was. <laughs> I wasn't going to call my camera, which was my number one dream. Um, but it was actually my armpit assignment, <laughs> incidentally, but I loved it. It was great. <laughs> uh, but I was in the PA shop, but I got to take our friendship that we had and just it exploded. We went through so many, so many different things between her health and we all know that was. There we go. Living yeah. the dream, living the dream. We had a few different things I went through at the time, but you would never know that she was going through what she was going through, what I was going through. We were there for each other more than I could ever expect. And after I don't know how many years it's been now uh, since the, <laughs> since coming home, but when something happens in my life. She's the first person I call, no matter what. And like I said, I don't want to go too much. I don't. My gift's not here. Um, I had a couple ideas, and every time I was like thinking, oh yeah, I show my fiance. I'm like, this is what I'm gonna carry. She would send me a text. She's like, hey, what about this thing? I'm like, okay, let me cancel that order. <laughs> That's not gonna work. She likes that. She has that. Um, so. I actually have another thing completely, you can't go to a store and buy it, it's actually... Is it a t-shirt that says, oh, you look unapproachable, so yet you, here you are. <laughs> no, no, that's a really good idea. I will, I Hey, we can get that made. I'm in Vegas, you can do anything in Vegas. Made. <laughs> but anyway, I'll just let you know how much I love this girl, and she's closer... I'll take her over anyone in my family in a heartbeat. And I think my family knows that. Uh, I'm they about don't to, like me. <laughs> they don't like her. They really don't. I'm about to be married in 32 days, and my sisters are still very mad that she was made of honor. I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? They suck. <laughs> but she did come up with a really good plan of what they can do for my wedding. They get to hold her dress when she pees. <laughs> She's in the commissary at Charleston, walking down the middle of the aisle really slow. People will know which car is hers to scrape the... Because I'll probably still be wearing his boot. <laughs> All right, and then, you know, once again for that car, a nice little retire. Oh, um, yep. Okay. Uh, for the new house that's getting built, we got a uh, Air Force retired 3x5 flag that will be flown proudly outside, I'm yes, sure. Yes, it will be. Nice. Uh, I'd go with t-shirt, so you can show it off. So, uh, veteran proudly served. That's kind of a given. I think we kind of all know she, she proudly served. I think it's been well known and well documented. All right, and then, so um, getting out, I, I was going to get you like this really big, awesome coffee mug, uh -huh. and then I thought, you have nothing to stress about anymore now. I don't. You're not here. So she's got the <laughs> baby <laughs> coffee mug, which yeah. if you really want, it could actually be a shot glass. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, and then, because it's a shot glass, there's something in here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Whoever's driving, she needs to drive. We cleared that up before we 
left the house. Yeah. I'm a planner, problem solver. Come on, I know it up. Alright, so just real quick, and, and I know that everybody's probably got, well, I know everybody has a story. Uh, we've all experienced time carry. Uh, and honestly, it really, it's a testament to who she is, the fact that so many people are actually here from right now. And we have people from Las Vegas, Las Vegas, who came from farther? Maryland, Virginia. New York. So we've got people yeah. that came uh, across the country to be here with you uh, for today. So it, it really is, it, it shows a lot of what, of who Carrie is. Uh, and so we just want to, first of all, I want to thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, Carrie, I want to thank you because I think uh, when I, I came, into, uh, came into the office, I haven't been a superintendent. I haven't even actually really been in the Air Force for the last eight years. I've been on joint assignments in one deep slot far away. So coming into the office, which she you know, masterfully ran, uh, really was kind of a, a huge weight off my shoulders. But once again, uh, because the bar was up here, which is probably higher than my shoulders, uh, she made it really, really hard to, to achieve. So uh, thank you for getting everybody ready <laughs> for me and for helping me out by making sure that we have, I have an amazing team. Uh, so you can see the guys in the back. Um, seriously, it really, really means a lot. Um, thank you for them. Thank you for your service. Um, you're going to get that a lot now as you walk around with the entire cap on. Um, retired, not expired. Retired, not expired. <laughs> so, seriously, just overall, thank you. And again, thank you, everybody. Um, like I said, I'm sure everybody's got stories. If you want to have everybody stand up and hear them, or if you want to just, uh, you know, as long as we keep it. Uh, we got rid of the crime, except I'm sure there's last one. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. And the oh, no. Is, it's been really low, so I'm pretty impressed. With she that. told me I couldn't Can swear. You couldn't yes. swear. <laughs> Can I agree with that? I can try. Yeah. 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 So, I do want to be shaking. share his story of his first interaction with me. Mr. Rayhorn will appreciate this. You're part of this too? Are you going to do that? So, the first time I ever met or I ever interacted with Sergeant Whitehead was in tech school. I was a uh, uh, fresh airman, first class, at a public board meeting. Um, before I ever saw uh, Senior Whitehead, I had heard of her reputation. Um, everyone was uh, terrified of her constantly, all the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, all we ever heard about Senior Whitehead were horror stories. Uh, people getting their heads ripped off in her office, uh, getting in trouble. That's legit. Um, I, I, the co first time I ever saw Senior Whitehead, I was standing around with a group of other airmen at a coffee table, and uh, a couple of them had their feet up on this coffee table. And, you know, we're just talking, and we're like, and we all looked at and we saw her glaring at us, and then uh, one looked down immediately, and, you know, Nobody ever put their feet back up on that coffee table. Uh, the second time I saw Senior Whitehead, I was talking to an instructor out in the hallway, and uh, the instructor was leaning against uh, the wall, and all of a sudden I hear this incredibly loud voice come down the hallway from the other side of the schoolhouse, get off that wall! <laughs> instructor gets up, stands up, and is, uh, you know, looks down at the ground. <laughs> and this is a master sergeant, by the way. Uh, one of my head instructors, and so <laughs> uh, that was my the first thing I ever knew or heard about Senior Whitehead. So you know, when I this teaches you, <laughs> I'm tough but fair. But very, very, very <laughs> so when I went to Luke Air Force Base and later found out that she was coming to become our new superintendent. You were the one that was telling the stories, weren't you, Evan John? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is going to be the worst. Oh my gosh, she's going to come and destroy all of us all the time. But what ended up actually happening is that when she got there, uh, you know, she had this reputation for being tough, but it wasn't tough in the way you think of, you know, at tech school where it's a training environment and all of your instructors are tough and all of your teachers have to be hard. You know, to make sure everyone stays disciplined and straight. Um, she was tough in a very different way. Uh, when she got there, of course, everyone was scared of her. But it quickly became clear after the first couple of weeks that she wasn't there, you know, 
he yelled at us to break us down to you know make sure that we were all straight and straight all the time. Of course, she has always been a stickler for regulations. Uh, after the first couple of weeks of being there, it became very clear that her number one job, her number one goal for us was to take care of us, uh, to make sure that we were provided for, to make sure all of our needs are taken care of. Um, uh, she had cancer twice while being our superintendent, while being our boss, and uh, she still came in almost every single day to work, you know, to take care of us first and foremost. Anytime, you know, anything happened to any one of us, you know, we had issues in our personal lives, she was there to make sure that we were taken care of. She was there to make sure that we had solutions to all of our problems. Um, anytime we ever needed help for anything, we all knew that we could go to her and ask her, and she would devote 100% of her energy and her effort to helping you, and to solving your problems first and foremost, while she had cancer, uh, twice, in our office. Um, so, when people say that she's tough, you know, when I say that she has a reputation for being tough, she's tough not because she's hard on you, but because she's a survivor, because she fights for you, and because she is. She's the toughest person I've ever met. Um, I mean, she's helped me in so many different ways. She's shown me what it really truly means to be a leader, to take care of your people. We had, I, I mean, she's helped all of the airmen in our office. We had, in, uh, she got an airman out of deployment so that they could attend their grandmother's funeral, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> the toughest person I've ever met, man. Uh, congratulations for your time. <laughs> Okay, Mike. Nope. No. It's not it yet. Hold on. Oh, no, no. You need to come up here. Oh, no. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, if you want to open this, <laughs> you just get up here. Oh, Mike, it's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> this is not edible. <laughs> so, um. Have you met Ted? <laughs> All right, so um, they're both the same, but they're different. Uh, but See, we're both the same, but we're different. Stereo. Double that friends, so. It's almost yeah. like you planned it. <laughs> so uh, my name is Matthew Murray, their older brother. Um, so. <laughs> so um, this is. I'll let you open it because it okay. really has the story behind it. Okay. Um, so this is something that's uh, from years ago my dad came up with. Uh-oh. So, <laughs> I don't know what it is, do you? <gasps> we can't curse. Okay. <laughs> dad curse, not me. I know, but we can't curse. <laughs> This license plate don't mean four letter word starts with mess. Yep. Yes. He always wanted this as his license plate. So we've always remembered that growing up. And these were on your car, right? They were. He was the first one of us to actually implement it. <laughs> so yes. Because most states won't let you swear on license plates. Yeah. So, so, you have to make so, up what this actually means. Yeah, so yes. when, when I, when made I, that mistake. When, I first, when I first requested him from California, I put on there what it meant. If you do a personal expert, you got to say what the letters mean. So I did. And they sent me a nice little rejection letter that says, no, it's not going to happen. And then I, so, so I gave it about six months and I tried again. And since my name starts with an M, so, so I said, oh, this is just my brothers and sisters' initials. So I made up names. <laughs> <laughs> so they sent it to me. <laughs> and children. Yeah, and children. Because there were only five of us. <laughs> yes. So I just made up names. So who should? Huh? Huh? <laughs> thank, yeah, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I have to be honest to Madame Yama. It took this woman 10 years to agree that this was the right decision for us, to be honest with you. Um, it was hard for her because all three of her kids decided to be, well, two and a half. productive <laughs> <laughs> members of society. We all decided that we were not necessarily destined for greatness, but we were destined to do more than what our little hometown had to offer. Um, little. Like little. Like, little. Yeah. Like little. So we all joined the military. <laughs> so to her, it looked like we were, you know, itching to just leave. But that wasn't it. We just wanted a path. We wanted something that was bigger than ourselves. So um, it took her a while to jump on board, but she finally did, and she's been there to help us through deployments, TDYs, moving. I don't know how many times I broke this woman's back. <laughs> Saying, hey, I'm PCSing again. You want to come help? She's going to say no one of these days. Um, no, she won't. So, no, well, she you won't. should PCS. So, just thank you yeah, no more PCS. for everything yeah. that you've done for us uh, over the last 21 years. Six months. 11 days, technically. Tomorrow's 12. <laughs> That's for you. Ken is my stepdad. He's been in my life for oh, since we were like 10. 12. Oh, no, well, there, there, yeah. Cause you got married when we were like 11. Yeah. yeah. And he's been there to challenge us and to support us and never really questioned us. Like he was there to say, hey, Lisa, this is their decision. They're providing themselves with a path, you know, a paycheck, a goal, something that they can do. So he's always been there to support us. So uh, thank you for everything that you've done for us. I'm very proud of most of you. Oh, yeah, I forgot to give you guys hugs. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to be rude and do it while she was talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said I forgot to give you guys hugs, so. Sorry, sorry. All right, all right. Okay. Sorry. This one is uh, for my niece. My baby. For traveling down here. Uh, uh, with my 11 oh, niece, old oh, uh, great nephew. The baby. And the trip from X. <laughs> yeah. Because she made it, he made it, the car seat didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still has it. Which was yeah. fun at Same. you know two o'clock this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and she was supposed to arrive by like eight something yesterday. So she had a struggle. Yeah. So just a little something to say thank you for traveling all this way <laughs> to be here. Uh -huh. <laughs> and don't do You look like your grandpa. <laughs> 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 Jason, you've just always been there to put up with us. <laughs> they were mean as kids. They're why I know about the boogeyman. <laughs> he was really mean. <laughs> and Matt. Oh, thank you. I got an open, maybe. Oh, got an open. <laughs> Is mine for retirement? No. No? Not yet? Nope. Oh, I'm trying. It sings. <laughs> it sings. <laughs> it sings. It's a bottle opener. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The <laughs> kids just talking about it. bottle opener. All right. Here's the reason that you like bars. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh. Huh? Is there something else in there other than that? I couldn't find it. I know, I'm not Bubba. What is it? I'm sorry. It's Where MIA. It is. It's, 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 yeah, it's MIA. What was it? Uh, oh, it's down there. Oh, okay. oh. sorry. I was like, huh, what is this thing? Oh. No, that's your pen. Oh. oh. <laughs> Whose pen is this? I didn't see a tie tack. tack. We lost the well, tie tack, y'all. Is it on the, no? Nope. Nope. Okay, well, I oh. Owe you oh, no, no, sorry, it's here. Oh. All right. It's an official Air Force tie tack. Why? Because I wear ties all the time? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's what uh, you used to. I used to. But yeah. All right. So, who's this? 
Is that yours? Is that? This is mine. I think that was yeah, that's for you. Oh, that's, that's oh, you okay. It's a hat pin. It's a what? Hat pin. Hat pin? Yes. All right, it'll go good with my Yankee colors. Yes. Just saying. Uh oh. Oh, this child is the light of my life. And being a military brat, we know that they have to go through a lot. But being the military brat of a mom who's been fighting cancer for nine years, she's gone through a lot. She was three when I was first diagnosed. And she has never wavered. She has never um, not supported me. She has always been there. She is at an age now where, you know, if I'm not feeling good, she's like, Mom, I got this. I got this. I can take care of you. Um, she's just an amazing kid. I could not have asked for a better support system because it's, it's her and I, you know, uh, late at night, it's her and I. I have wonderful friends, wonderful family, both blood and air force, everybody there to support me. But in the wee hours of the night, I have her and she has never faltered. She has been there every step of the way and she is my champion. She will be the first one to tell her dad, you need to leave mom alone. She's going to the <laughs> <laughs> Cassidy, you are the best kid that I could ever ask for. And I so appreciate everything that you have given up. The moving, the having to make new friends, which you struggle for us introverted folk. <laughs> but you do it. And you just press on. And I kid you not, this kid is so excited about moving back to South Carolina, <laughs> she would go home and pack her bags tonight. <laughs> and I keep telling her, we don't have a home yet. We gotta wait till we have a home. But. <laughs> so, you know your big gift. You'll get that next month. Um, but this is just a little something to say thank you for everything. Huh? Best mom ever. Oh. <laughs> nice and fuzzy. <laughs> I don't know what this one's. Been here two years. I'm on my third. Yeah, a couple of them now. No. <laughs> but um, it talks, and um, I admire your strength and your courage. And I often told other people about her and her struggle that we're going through. And I think I linked you up with another lady who was kind of going through the same stuff. But as you're out, as you're on your retirement, and you're hanging out at the house, chilling and relaxing. Mm -hmm. I just got you a little so I'm getting good at that. I hope you <laughs> drink tea. I didn't know for sure, but, drink tea. Yes. but here you go. So just open that up. I'm a tea drinker. Good time. Tea drinker. This is oh, something yep. for you. Mm -hmm. Probably some hot tea around the house. I love coffee mugs. <laughs> and I love teal coffee mugs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll open all the cards later. Good idea. You could be here all night. <laughs> Saturday. Y'all got things to do. Sergeant Cantu wants to go dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so, just thank you for everybody taking time out of your Saturday evening to come here. I really appreciate it. Um, I didn't, like I said before, I didn't want to go through the big formal ceremony. I just wanted an opportunity for people who have, who I've enjoyed working with and have possibly found value in the 21 years that I did, um, to come out and enjoy a meal. It's been a long road. I have loved every minute of it. Um, I could have honestly medically retired back in 2010, but I fought to stay 
and I fought to stay every year because I loved what I did. The Air Force gave me an opportunity to lead and mentor airmen. It was never about the, the authority, the power, or anything that the strike gave. It was about the opportunity to sit at a higher table that the strike gave, the big kid's table, because that's where you influence change. The more strikes you have, the more change you can influence. Um, that's what it was always about for me, the more knowledge that I had. You get at a bigger table, you get more knowledge, you can help more airmen. You should never, ever, ever go into any day playing, I got a secret. Because my job as a senior NCO is to work for all of my airmen, all of my NCOs, all of my supervisors. My job is to work for them to make sure that they have everything that they need to be successful. And I thoroughly enjoyed every opportunity that I got to do that. And um, that's what I'm going to miss, being able to advise and counsel and provide that knowledge. Um, that's all it was ever about for me. And it's amazing because I started this journey with, I did it because I didn't have anything better to do. My town didn't offer anything. So here I am, 21 years later, a senior master sergeant because I had nothing better to do. <laughs> So, I mean, just, it's funny, I was looking through some stuff the other day, and I actually found the one and only piece of adverse paperwork I ever had, a 341 pulled in basic training, <laughs> because I answered a question wrong, you'll find this appalling, but I told my PI that an Air Force tech sergeant was an 06. <laughs> that, that wasn't the case, so she said, Emma Murray. Give me a 341. And you think with this mouth, <laughs> I would have had a lot more. But I tried to learn from other people's mistakes. But I will be quick, fast, and in a hurry to give you that paperwork should you choose to do something that warrants it. So I just want to leave all the supervisors in the room. Work for your airmen. Do what they need you to do, but hold them accountable. And always remember, you're not out to ruin somebody's career. Their action caused your reaction. And just provide them with that opportunity to, because a correction is an opportunity to learn. The individual getting corrected is the one that's gonna decide how they take it, how they grow from it. Uh, but it's your job as an NCO, senior NCO, a fellow airman, to provide that opportunity, to hold them to the standard. The Air Force, as much as we don't like to admit it, is not paying you to make friends. They're paying you to do a job and to do the job with the best of your ability every day that you choose to do it. And that's what I tried to do. That's why I stuck around. And that's why I came in when I was going through chemo. Because the Air Force was paying me to do a job and to do the job to the best of my ability. So that's what I tried to do every day. Some days were easier than others. But I loved every day that I got to serve in the Air Force. Every day. Even when I was so sick from chemo, I couldn't pull myself off the bathroom floor. I still loved knowing that I was an airman. And I had my Air Force family to back me up. So thank you all for coming out here. You can always text me if you need anything. I will be around. I am retired, not expired. <laughs> thank you. I get block B. Yeah, she's got B. Okay. Nearest relative. Oh, okay. Nearest relative is B. <laughs> what? Maybe B. That's what we talked about. It takes us way back. <laughs> Go where? <laughs> hey, let everybody else do it first, okay? You're going right. through, but I'm calling my block. All right. So this is everybody leaving. Some people still standing over there talking. A lot of people already left. But uh, it's cold out there. Yeah. It's a little chilly. Yeah. Not doing it. No? Not doing it. See, this is why I was going to bring you the sweatshirt.
Oh, you're just going in the car. Car. It makes you feel better. So the restaurant was very good. Well, I think the restaurant was very good. They have some live music over here. Um, it's very, um, very nice. Very nice restaurant. Um, and a very nice uh, celebration for my twin sisters. One who uh, is retiring after 21 and a half years, and the other one just made senior master sergeant after 21 and a half years now. So, and here they come. Here comes the gang, or well, part of them, anyway. Whoa, whoa. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Be like a, a sheep, a sheep herder. We'll give you a staff for your retirement. There you go. We're so sorry. We'll be back though. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, rush out behind us and lock the door real quick. So make sure nobody else goes in. Right. <laughs> I saw you move the car. Yeah. It's open. It's open. Ah, babies. Babies are crying. Babies are crying. Let me turn on the car. Turn on the car. Put some heat to this mother. He probably didn't see the car was moved. Hey bud. I know. Grandpa Matt will get the car moving and he goes over 25 miles an hour. Don't you, Don't you worry about that, buddy. I'll take care of the speed. Yeah, he needs it to be a little fast so he can hear the rumbling. I know, because I was like, uh, where's the car? car and then I looked down and I was like, oh, okay. I need to oh, hope. Yep, yeah, see, he's a little crying over there. Oh, All right. Hey, where's the car seat? I don't know. You can't Did Carrie get it? Where's car seat? Over there. Which one? Oh, there she is. Oh, she's probably getting it. I'm getting it right now. Let me open the trunk. Yeah, so we have to borrow a car seat so my grandbaby and my daughter can get to the airport Monday because their car seat is still stuck in Fayetteville. So yeah, so we have to uh, borrow an infant car seat so we can um, get them back to the airport on Monday. Good times, good times. Wee! What's up? You gonna say hi to the people? No. Say hi, people. I'm not being in your thing. <laughs> You're already in the thing. No, no. You're in the thing because you are part of the thing. <laughs> you are part of the thing. <laughs> you are, you are the thing point one or point half. One point one. You're, you're, <laughs> you're one point five of the thing. <laughs> you're part of the thing. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Oh. That was my niece. Uh, oh, what you doing? Oh, oh, you think you're gonna hide? Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> you're part of the thing, I'm telling you. All right, we got this trunk open. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna carry this over there so I can just, oh. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> you get my no. car over here? Yep, all right. Get the moving. 
for this little guy. Uh, 20 tacos from Jack in the Box because we don't have that and uh, Virginia and 10 cheeseburgers. Cheeseburger! Are the cheeseburgers a dollar too? I don't know what they were. No, they couldn't have been. They were like, had to have been like that. Probably like a dollar seventy, dollar eighty piece, something like that. Yeah. So it is up to the stairs, time for bed, after a very long but enjoyable and successful day, um, had a lot of fun, celebrated my two sisters and all their wonderful accomplishments, and now time to plug this bad boy in and uh, get some sleep before well, we gotta travel tomorrow back to Virginia. So yeah. Alright, good night.